Welcome to You Be The Judge, where the objective of this show is to put it out there and let you be the judge. I know everybody got their beliefs, but don't hate on mine. Now check out this content. Hey, what's up with the Charles Iceberg right in the building? So today I'm going to go in on uh, Mayor London Breed, San Francisco mayor. Um, she's been in office since 2018. And what I will say about her, she's put on a good performance. Um, she's entertained us for the last six years. Uh, she's been around luncheons and all this stuff talking big. And, um, when you look at your city, are you entertained? And the resolution is more cameras, more, uh, surveillance. And she's going to go into this interview and I'm gonna break it down. This is fair use and shout out to the reporter, um, Andre senior. Um, he's, he's a great columnist, great reporter for uh, KTV Channel 2 News. I respect this brother. He gets some real good interviews. But uh, check this out, and I'll be back. Yeah, you know, the saying goes, perception is reality here. And if the perception of residents is that crime is up, then that is also um, psychologically an issue that, that has to be addressed. And I will point to what you said in your State of the City address. And you said the number of drug arrests, you know, uh, doubled in 2023. Uh, retail theft car break-ins plummeted. The homicide rate is, uh, is, is uh, the arrest for homicides is higher than the national average right now. And, and as you said a moment ago, crime is at the lowest level it's been in 10 years. So with that in mind, Mayor, uh, if that's the case, why increase, why support the increase use of police technology if we have this reduction in crime happening? Uh, and, and part of this will, again, as you mentioned earlier, will allow for more police chase if we have this reduction already. okay so after after hearing that right there um crime is supposed to be going down we had the same situation with our mayor in oakland but crime is supposed to be going down you have these numbers these stats that you're telling oh crime is going down in my city so why all the cameras and all the surveillance you see what andre asked her and that was important because it makes sense um and we have to make this we have to govern ourselves and make sure these policies help us all people um, matter no matter what a, a race, you know, um, and this is important. So they say this. So what are you doing then? Okay, you're surveying the the process. I mean, I don't know, but this is a lot of money being spent on unnecessary things. If you're saying that this is happening and the statistics show that crime, burglary, homicides are going down in San Francisco, what is the need for this? And a lot of people should be asking that. But uh, I'm going to get back to this interview, and, uh, yeah, I'm going to break this down some more. Well, I'll, I'll just say, first of all, uh, Andre, the uh, legislation we got passed with Proposition E is not about uh, facial recognition technology, but it is about surveillance and our ability mm -hmm. to put cameras in public spaces in some of the high crime areas of San Francisco mm -hmm. in order to help. Uh, deter and, if necessary, arrest those who are committing crimes on the streets of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to use drone technology, so uh, you talked about the high-speed chases. I mean, our goal is not to go backwards and uh, to create more harm as a result of pursuing suspects in San Francisco. We want the police to have the ability to do so when it is safe, and drones could be another tool to uh, avoid um, pursuits, especially in daytime when we know there's a lot of people out on the streets, the drones can be a tool to help us address that as well. So two great victories for public safety overall. In 2023, crime was down to the lowest it's been in yeah. 10 years. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, you know, like I said, stop the crime. We want to uh, decrease that. Um, but my thing is, I always, you know, I, I go into things and I think about it. So what are those drones really able to do? Um, when they're flying over, can they see inside my house? Can they see inside of your house? I mean, it's similar to that Airbnb situation where they got the cameras and hidden places and that's not, that's not security. That's a violation of, of a person's rights. So that's the part that I have in question, you know, with that situation, which they never tell us. They'll say, oh, we got all this technology and you see what technology can do. So just imagine what those drones could do. So, hey, if you in Frisco, that's something you need to pay attention to and ask yourself, hey, what can those drones actually do? See, and they're not going to tell us that. They put all these cameras and different shit in your community. They don't actually tell you how they really work. And, uh, and I'm into technology, and I know that there's a whole lot of possibilities with those cameras and that surveillance and what it can do. Okay, look at AI. But uh, back to this content. I, I, I'll be back, man. You be the judge, though.
All right, let's move to Proposition F now, Mayor, uh, which will require welfare recipients to be drug tested and enter treatment if they're using, uh, which could uh, have many uh, could have their money taken away too, and it could mean they get evicted. Uh, what's the plan for those who fail drug testing and are evicted from housing? Wouldn't that push them back on the streets? And what's the plan for that? So, Andre, another false. Um, statement about uh, Proposition F. Uh, to be clear, people who are advocates for this policy who pushed are in recovery themselves. People who have suffered from addiction on the streets of San Francisco who asked us to be more assertive and to do more to make sure people don't die on the streets of San Francisco. So what, so what y'all think of that one? I don't know. That to me... Um... Sounds like a trick bag. And I understand people become irresponsible that are on drugs and stuff, but I don't know. Um, that's kind of messed up because once they lose their benefits, then they're stuck waiting for you to put them in the system. So what is that helping? I mean, you're going to put them in a shelter. Where are you going to put these people when you got all these immigrants and stuff coming here that are taking up those spaces? I don't get it. So this right here is another trick bag. I don't know if this is going to help. Maybe we need to see the stats uh, when they come out and see how effective this is. But to me, it's a trick bag. And I don't know uh, what this, you know, does at all um, for the people that are suffering again. So I don't know, man. This is just a bunch of um, jargon, a bunch of uh, malarkey put in there that, you know, like I said, she's saying that they're trying to uh, a false narrative. It's not no false narrative when you walk through the Tenderloin, when you walk through Frisco, when you walk through Chinatown, you see the difference. I'm just saying that's what it is, you know, so I have to bring that, I have to bring that to everybody's attention. But uh, back to this content and uh, I'll finish this off. Number two, we have the ability to, even if we say that you're not in treatment, you won't get these benefits. We can, as a city, directly provide payment to landlords and also, in most cases, many of these people who receive general assistance are either in our permanent supportive housing units, they're in our shelter system. So there are ways that we could make sure that no one is evicted as a result of non-payment to them directly, but we will have in place a way to provide payment directly to ensure that whatever amount this money was covering for someone's housing, we have the ability under the law to, to get do on. that. Speaking of combating the issue, which, you know, you've been trying to do for years since you've been mayor. Uh, your competitor for mayor, District 11 Supervisor Asha Safai, he wants to resurrect the Homeward Bound program that uh, has helped about 13,000 people that's been reported uh, in the Chronicle uh, return to their loved ones outside of the Bay Area. Uh, but it hasn't really been active more recently in your administration. Why is that and do you support bringing that program back to full strength? Yeah. Well, again, here's another false information that's being provided to the public in a way to gain political points and to bring attention to a candidate for mayor. The fact is, since I've been mayor, since 2018, we have helped over 15,000 people exit homelessness, and that includes implementation of the Homeward Bound program. Uh, shout out to Andre Sr. for this interview. Uh, Got to send him a shout out. Uh, programs, see? Programs that statistically they say work, but when you look outside, you don't see them working. All these stats that they throwing out there, oh, this is down, this is down. When you go outside, does it look like it's down? You hear this propaganda on TV, hey, these are down, this, that, down, this, down. When you go outside, do it look like it's down? I'm just saying, that's why I don't trust in those politics. We have a right to govern ourselves, y'all. We have that right. So let's exercise that. For real, man, I'm, I'm so serious, man. I, I'm looking at all the cities and all the states and what's going on with black folks right now. Man, man, you see it. They allocating everything to other people, other groups, other ethnicities besides black Americans. They allocating that bread elsewhere, like I said. And when we get a few dollars, we fighting over it because it's so scarce. I'm, I'm telling you. They don't, y'all don't get this. Y'all don't get it, but you better understand, you know, that it's real. And it's a, it's some, it's a system in place for this. So we got to fight it. Don't think like your grandparents or somebody older than you. Don't think like that because this is happening now. Okay. They fought for us. Then we got to fight for them. Now, let me say that again. 
our ancestors fought for us then, we got to fight for them now. Okay? So if you black and you care about our struggle and want to see us do better, pay attention to these policies. Learn them. Let's do this together. For the people that care about us, you know, uh, equality and us leveling this playing field like the Indians did, like, you know, they got the, the field leveled. But what they got? All these other groups too. I'm not going to go into that because then I become this other person that people will judge and I'm not here to be judged. I'm just here to give you my public opinion. Um, and with that being said, you know, this, this, this is a lot going on, man. And that's why I've been sitting back, not doing my podcast because you got to consume so much of this media every day and you got to take your time to process all this shit because you got news coming from here. You got news coming from there. You got the black media, you got the white media, you got all this different stuff and I'm black media. Let me just clarify that. Um, and we have to decipher, you know, what the white media is doing to attack us as a culture, not just, you know, podcast. I'm talking about black people as a culture because they put the stuff out there like that, you know, that good times type shit. You feel me? Degenerate ass behavior. And like I said, it's a time and place for everything. I just don't think degeneracy belongs in public. It doesn't belong in public places. It doesn't belong anywhere. But if you're going to be degenerate, be degenerate at the house. Don't do that shit in public. Okay? Because they love to publicize it when we do that shit. And I'm not going to act like I ain't different. I come from that shit. I come from all that shit, that degenerate behavior, man. I come from that shit. I'm just tired of it. And you should too, man. See your people become do this shit on TV and all this uh buck buck dancing and all that old weird ass shit. I'm tired of it, man. I'm tired of seeing my people do this and I want to see us stand up again, man. For our answers that fall for us then, we have to fight for them now, man. Y'all don't get that? It don't stop. Everybody ready to go to you know, go in the house. Oh, the fight. No, the fight is not over for black Americans. Honestly, it's never gonna be over. A lot of these groups can't say that. And I'm just keeping it a buck, man. But I'm going to end on that note. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And you be the judge. This is my public opinion. I appreciate it again. I want y'all to keep it lit and enjoy your life. Don't enjoy somebody else's, man. I'm out. Okay, so I just put it out there. And you be the judge. Again, I'm not going to hate on your content. So don't hate on mine. All right, y'all.